Mark 9 verse 28 says, All things are possible to him who believes. I want you to say it with me. All things are possible to him who believes. We're going to say it again. All things are possible to him who believes. Now I ask you this morning, are you a believer? Do you believe? Are you an unbeliever? You say no. Are you a doubter? No. I'm a believer. And Jesus said all things are possible to those who believe. Now when we talk about miracles and receiving a miracle from the Lord, we understand that the days of miracles are not over. We're still in a period that God performs miracles. Jesus has not come back. He has not come back to receive his church to himself and present that church as a spotless bride without wrinkle to the Father. But we do know that the miracles that God performs are not just relegated to the past. He is a God who is a now God. He is a God who does supernatural, miraculous things far beyond our um, puny minds can really grasp. This God who is stupendously great. This God who created all things by His Word. He is a God who performs the miracles. And we so often, like Gideon long ago, we ask the question, well, if God is really for me, where be His miracles? He was hiding away. He was threshing wheat, afraid of the Midianites. And the angel appeared to him and said, Hail thou mighty man of valor. Well, if I'm a man of valor, where are his miracles? Where be his miracles? This God whom we serve. Where be his miracles? Gideon asked. And he was soon to discover that the God of the miraculous was still very much alive and well and able to perform miracles on behalf of the people of Israel. A miracle is something wonderful. It's beyond your own understanding. You cannot explain it. It's not a natural phenomenon. It's outside the ordinary. It transcends the natural. It's supernatural. And we say... It's a miracle. And so, dear friend, this morning, I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. Do you believe in miracles? If you believe in miracles, say amen. amen. Do you expect a miracle from the hand of God? Amen. Whether it is a miracle in your finances, whether it's in the, a miracle in the area of the physical, your body, whether it's a miracle in the area of your emotions, whether it's a miracle in your marriage, and some of you, I dare say, do need that miracle to restore that marriage of yours. It's a miracle you need this morning. Well, let me tell you emphatically that God is the God of the miraculous. Without any doubt whatsoever, I can affirm this morning that God is a God of the miraculous. Right from Genesis through to Revelation, we read of miracles all one after another. The Bible is full of miracles. In fact, the Bible is a miracle book. How else can you define or explain the existence of the Bible that you hold in your hand and you cherish apart from a miracle. It's a miracle in its preservation. It's a miracle in its content. It's a miracle book because God, the God of miracles, is the author of that miracle book. Can you define the miracle of prayer? Can you really explain how it works that you can pray here in South Africa, and there's a miracle that takes place in England. You pray for somebody there or somewhere else. That there's no barrier with distance as far as a miracle is concerned in prayer. When you pray, it's a miracle. Every time you pray and you talk to your Heavenly Father, you are involved in the miraculous. 
You are involved in the supernatural. When I grew up as a boy, I was in a home that believed in the supernatural power of God because they had experienced it again and again. They experienced God supernaturally intervening. My parents had a little farm in the eastern Transvaal. One day in winter when the grass was very dry, a fire broke out and fire was sweeping down onto their little homestead and it was vicious. They were going to lose everything. They went into the room and they prayed while the fire was raging and the wind was blowing it towards their little house. They prayed and when they came out of that prayer time, the wind had turned and the fire was blowing the other direction, blowing itself out. Miracles are the order of the day when you come to believe as Christians. You expect them. Expect a miracle every day. Not just now and again or when you come to church. Expect a miracle from the hand of God. You say, Pastor, I need a miracle in my business. I need a miracle in my family. I need a miracle in my finances. Well, let me tell you this morning, you can have a miracle. You can have a miracle. Don't sit there in doubt and unbelief because miracles never come to unbelievers. Miracles do not happen in favor of those who do not believe. According to your faith, so shall it be done unto you. If you believe, all things are possible. All things are possible to those who believe. Nudge the person beside you and say, you're sitting next to a believer. I believe. And therefore I expect a miracle from the hand of God. When you look at the Old Testament, you see miracle after miracle. You notice how that God performed those miracles. And the thing that impressed me as a young boy was the fact that we witnessed miracles. I witnessed a miracle in my own body when God healed me. When my, my spirit left my body and floated up in the ceiling and then came back into my body after prayer. I witnessed a miracle when a lady was brought in who had a back broken in a few places and she was in a plaster cast from her head to her feet and stood up and they took the plaster cast off her and stood that plaster cast against the wall and she walked around totally healed. When you see a miracle like that, you know that God is the God of miraculous. I was preaching up in Rudaput and prayed a mass prayer. And I'll never forget a man back there felt something strange happen in his chest. He went to the hospital after the Sunday afternoon meeting and uh, they examined him and, and they did some x-rays and they brought previous x-rays and the current x-ray and the doctor said, this is amazing. You see, previously, this x-ray shows that you just have a tiny little wizard lung on the one side, normal lung on the other side, but a little wizard lung on the, on the one side. But now this new x-ray shows that you've got a brand new lung where there was just a wizard lung. What happened? He said, well, I was in a meeting and a miracle happened. You see, God can put back in your body what the doctors have taken out or is missing. We prayed for people who don't have any eardrums and God recreates an eardrum puts an eardrum in, and they can hear perfectly. Because God is the God of miracles. We can go on and on talking about what He does supernaturally in answer to prayer. But I just want to confirm with you this morning that God will perform a miracle for you because He's a miracle-working God. What is natural to God is so supernatural to us. What is natural to him in creating the sun and the moon and the stars and flinging them out in space by his word, just natural to him, it's supernatural as far as we're concerned. He just spoke it all into existence. It took a miracle when he hung the world in space. It took a miracle when he saved me and brought me into harmony and fellowship with himself. 
because he is such a wonderful miracle working God God dealing with man makes bare his arm and signs wonders and miracles performs the miraculous to cause Israel to know that he is their deliverer and sends plague upon plague miraculous signs miraculous wonders it's absolutely supernatural what happens those supernatural miracles they march out towards their promised inheritance and when they come to a, a sea that bars their way a miracle happens and there's a pathway right through the sea when they need food there's food that rains down from heaven and they pick it up every morning nice and fresh when they need water water flows out of the rock they need new clothes well they never do because their clothes just grow with them just supernaturally God provides for them it's miracle after miracle miracle after miracle absolutely stupendous miracles when Jesus comes in on the scene 2,000 years ago and walks with mankind in Palestine he demonstrates the power and will of God by the miraculous he heals the sick opens blind eyes and stops deaf ears the lame walk and even the dead are raised mighty signs and wonders demonstrating that he is the Messiah that he is the Son of God he is not a man that he should lie but he is God Almighty who has promised in his word that they who believe shall receive a miracle thank God for the miraculous power that he demonstrates here on earth when Jesus was here and he performed the miraculous there were those who said well, no man can do these things except God be with him and those miracles continue through his disciples as they go everywhere preaching the good news miracles continue to happen Bible says in Hebrews 2 verse 4 God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will Acts chapter 14 4 verse 16 what shall we do to these men for that indeed a notable miracle has been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem and we cannot deny it when God performs a miracle and people cannot deny it they have to take notice they have to sit up and take note when God performs a miracle we I believe are on the threshold of one of the greatest visitations of God planet earth has ever seen in preparation for the coming of the Lord Jesus we might get a little distressed because of the news and because of what some of the radical Muslims are doing but I've got news for those radical Muslims that God hasn't abdicated his throne that God is still on his throne and he's not a vengeful God He's not a God of hate he's not a God is a great despot cruelly wanting to maim people and destroy people no he's a God of great love and compassion he's a God of supreme love and his love reaches out to mankind his love is manifested in the miraculous he shows his love to mankind he reveals his love to us thank God for his wonderful love his disciples showed the love of God by healing the sick and the miracles that happened was because of God's love manifested when they despitefully accused Stephen a young disciple of the Lord a young deacon and they took him out to stone him the Bible says his face shone like a, the face of an angel and as the stones came pelting upon him he was full of faith and he said lay not this charge this to their charge forgive them they don't know what they're doing but the Bible says of that young man that he was full of faith and power 
and did great wonders and miracles among the people. In Acts chapter 8, they wondered beholding the miracles and the signs. Acts chapter 19, special miracles were wrought when cloth was taken from Paul's body and laid upon the sick and the infirm and demon-possessed. Special miracles took place. The gifts of the Spirit are nine in number, and one of them is the gift of working of miracles. And it's never been removed from the church. It is still within the framework of the church of Jesus Christ. The gift of working of miracles. Hallelujah. There's the gifts of healing, but the gift of working of miracles is in the midst of his church. God has never removed it. It is still part and framework of the church of Jesus Christ. And it's necessary within the church. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came as a mighty rushing wind, it was miraculous. 120 people speaking in a language they had never learned. Fluently by the Spirit of God. Extolling God. And people were drawn by this supernatural manifestation. So that about 3,000 were added to the church. A man who was lame, healed suddenly, rises to his feet and goes leaping into the temple. And as a result, 5,000 are added to the church. You say, what in the world have you put that gallery in this church building for, pastor? There's nobody sitting up there yet, but there will be. It's all in preparation because of what the Lord is about to do. Hallelujah. There's going to be many who will come and we need to make room for a revival. It's revival. And we just made some room, just expanded a little to make more room. You see, we can shut down the old Alhambra Theater which we'd planned to do originally until the Lord told us we shall be here and also in the city, in the center of the city. And if we shut it down and we just said, folks, make your own way up here or bust some of you up, this place would be too small. We'd be packed out, gallery and all. Because I know the amount of people who come to that, that uh, old theater down in Brea Road. Some of you have never been there, but it's, uh, it's jammed out on Sunday mornings. And if we brought everybody from Wentworth on Sunday morning, and we brought everybody from Phoenix, and we brought everybody in here from, from uh, Chatsworth, and we brought everybody in here, we'd just be overwhelmed because we wouldn't be able to seat everybody. So we're just making room so that we can expand a little more in the kingdom of God. And we know that the Lord is adding to his church. And he told us he's not going to add, but he's also going to multiply to his church. So there's multiplication taking place. Hallelujah. I told you a few Sundays ago to wave to the people in the gallery. Now don't you dare go out here and say, the gallery is empty. Nobody is in the gallery. Well, shame on you, you unbeliever. Shame on you, you critic. Shame on you, you, you doubter. We waved at people up in the gallery, and some didn't because they didn't believe. Now the gallery is there. And some of you didn't even expect it to be there so quick. And, uh, or quickly. But thank God that we've been making provision. And soon it'll be filled, and I'll tell you what, what, it's not far away. It's going to be pretty full for this demonstration of truth that the children are putting on. But it's going to be filled when we bring everybody together and we have a grand celebration and we have a great Thanksgiving service, we're going to fill this place and it's going to be a great Thanksgiving service. And when some of the evangelists, I can't tell you who's going to come, but I'll tell you a little later on, we will let you know, but we're going to have evangelists who draw thousands of people by their ministry, through their ministry, and the preacher who has the biggest church building in the world is going to be with us shortly and uh, flying in his own jet. Their church has two jets. We haven't got there yet. 
And they have two jets. That means you've got to have a few pilots. And uh, where they've got their building built, their church building, it's like a small city. They even have a bank in that town. It's associated with the church. And they've been putting up homes for the people and, and they can seat 50,000 in, in the church building and many times it's too small. And when they have a prayer meeting, they've got to go outside in the field next to the church building. And their prayer meetings, when they have their prayer meeting, they get at least a million people coming to pray. Don't tell me that revival is not coming. There are places in the world that God is moving supernaturally already. And Durban is no exception. And Africa is no exception. <laughs> Hallelujah. When we see a miracle, we say, Jesus lives. Every time you speak in other tongues, I say, Jesus lives. That's a miracle in operation. When a demon cries and comes out of somebody and the person is delivered, that's a miracle. And we declare the kingdom of God has come to that individual. We have no time for dead religion. We don't have relics that we worship and we don't have all kinds of traditional things that we hold on to that, that are, are speaking of death and cold formality, but we believe in the supernatural visitation of the Spirit of Almighty God and that God does exactly what He did years ago, He'll do today. We don't put him and confine him into a little corner or a box and say, you can only do it this way or that way. We believe God is God and he is sovereign and he can do whatever he chooses to do. But we need to believe. We need to believe. His gifts are still evident in the church, but we must believe. If you believe, all things are possible to those who Believe. Hallelujah. Bible says that God has set some in the church. He set them in the church. Firstly, apostles. Secondly, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. He set them in the church. And gifts of healings, helps, and governments, diversities of tongues. These are supernatural operations that is put within the church. And thank God for it. When Israel was in Egypt, they needed a miracle. When they faced the Red Sea, they needed a miracle. When they faced hunger, they needed a miracle. When they faced the Jordan River, they needed a miracle. When they faced Jericho, they needed a miracle. When they faced the situation that was impossible in the natural, God who specialized in possibilities came through to meet that need and to come through to meet your need because he's a God of the miraculous. When a man was chopping down a tree, he was a, was a prophet, the son of a prophet, a trainee prophet, and the axe head fell into the water, went down, plummeted to the bottom. He needed a miracle. And God gave him a miracle and that axe head floated because he said to that, said to the prophet, it was borrowed. And when the prophet came, he threw in a, branch of a tree and the axe head began to swim because God is a miracle working God. When the widow's boys were going to be sold to pay some debt, pay, pay for them, they were going to go into slavery. They, she needed a miracle and God gave her a miracle. The little pot of oil is poured out into the vessels, just continue to pour and pour and pour until she could take those vessels and sell it and she had all the money necessary to pay for her debt. And I want to tell you, it doesn't matter what your debt is this morning. You work in cooperation with God, He'll help you to liquidate that debt. You've got to work in cooperation with Him. First, get rid of those, those credit cards. and Stop running up debt. So I won't have any more debt. Now God's going to help me to pay this debt off. If you've got a home and you've got a bond to pay, that's not debt because a home continues to increase in value. But understand this morning that God doesn't want you in debt. Doesn't want his people in debt. Because down the line in the future, there's coming tre tremendous pressure financially in this world. And I'll tell you that by my prophetic word this morning. Things are not going to get better out there in the world. There's all kinds of pressure coming. Petrol prices, we've been shocked petrol's going up. 
but God will supply us with more money to be able to pay for that petrol. Whatever it is. We've had people say, everything's going up, everything's going up, everything's going up. Well, I'm going up too. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. A widow in a famine had no food. And Elisha comes and says, Elijah says, says, just bake me a little cake. She takes the last little bit of flour and she bakes the cake and she has a miracle because her flour but never, never ran empty. Does he still perform the mirac miraculous today? A woman spent everything she had and rather grew worse than getting better. And uh, she came and touched Jesus and she was completely whole, made well. Miracle took place in the body. And I can tell you this morning that I've seen miracle after miracle. When you look and sit inside this building, I want to tell you it's a miracle. Some of you have been with us some time. You can vouch for it. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. We started off in faith just with a couple of boxes. And we brought out our five rands and put them in the boxes at the end of the service to pay for the wages for the people working here. And when Friday's, Friday came, sometimes I didn't know we're, in the natural weather we'd be able to meet the, meet the deadline, but every Friday we had the, the salaries to be able to pay the workers. And we worked by, got material and built, trusting God, putting up the framework of this building. And when it came to the roof, man, did we need a miracle. We couldn't put this roof on, which cost over two million rand, without a miracle. You know, a little lady came to me and gave me a million rand. God specializes in things thought impossible by man. I went and tried my own strength, ran around America, took a group of singers, and danced and sang, trying to raise money because everybody thinks there's a lot of money in America. But they have needs to meet, be met just as much as we do. And every church has also, are also committed to certain outreaches. And I smile at some of these people who think America's got a lot of money, and they do. And when they go to America, they think the, the church and people are just going to give them money for their project, whatever it may be. But you've got to believe God. And He's the source. Not man, but God is the source. And He supplies the need. When we looking for land, and we stood and looked at this piece of land here, we actually trusted God for it, and it came through. I was just reminded, you know, the land we bought over, over the other side, the extra parking, so we could have more parking for, our, for the uh, growth of the church. Over there, I stood there one day with Kim Clement, and uh, before we even got this land, and he took some money out of his pocket, I don't know how much he took, some coins, and he threw it out on the land, about where we got that land, and he said, this land belongs to Durban Christian Center. And decreed it. I agreed with him and we decreed it. And finally it comes about. So, you know, it's a miracle. And I have people, I've even had real estate people ask me, how did you get this land? We never knew it was, was available. But God is a God of the miraculous. I just want to encourage you this morning. It's a miracle. When we bought the old Lyric Theater, it took a miracle to pay that thing off. It took a miracle to buy the Alhambra Theater. It's taken a miracle to buy some of the properties we bought in the city of Durban. and taken a miracle to do some of the things we've been doing because we believe in a God and He has ongoing miracles at His disposal. Now you are facing certain needs you are wanting to launch out in business. You're wanting to expand. Well, if you know it is God's will with regard to what you're going to do, it's something good, and you put the kingdom of God always remember first. Put the kingdom first. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then things will be added to you. You'll prosper in your business. Your business will expand, but you've got to put the kingdom first. Money will come. But you've got to put the kingdom first. Place it first and foremost. And believe God. Now whatever it is, 
There's great pressure on you right now. So where am I going to get those millions from? Well, doesn't God own the cattle on the thousand hills? And doesn't the silver and gold belong to Him? I want to encourage you now as we close to expect a miracle and believe God for a miracle. Are you ready? You know exactly what it is that you're believing God for. Might just be something small, I don't know. Or it might be something immense because of the project that you're involved with. It might be costing millions to expand or to move on and to do other things. But let me tell you this morning, God is a miracle working God. Hallelujah. And He wants to supply that need because you place the kingdom first. After all, you can't take all that money with you no matter how much you make. But if you place the kingdom ahead of everything, he'll prosper you because his children never go begging. He's never seen his children begging. He'll provide. And so we're going to believe God this morning. Remember this. Firstly, you've got to be totally single-minded. You can't be in going in this direction one moment and then in that direction. You can't be saying, well, I'll do this or I'll do that. No, it's not that or all. It's just one thing. Be totally single-minded. Focus on that issue. Be totally focused and be single-minded. There's only that one way. No other way. As God has prompted within your heart the direction you ought to take. Be single-minded. And secondly, remember God is your source, not your boss. He's your source. Don't wonder how he's going to do it. He has many ways of doing it. If he can provide food in a, in a bird's beak for a hungry prophet and money in a fish's mouth for a man who needs to pay his taxes, he has many ways of supplying that need. Don't look to your boss. Don't look to the post box. But look to him. He's your source. And I want you to say this morning, God is my source. It's not a rich friend. It's not a parent. It's not the church. But God is your source. It's amazing how you have people who feel that the church should be their source. And if they just focus their attention on the Lord, He'll provide for them. He'll be their source. Instead of looking at the church to be their source. I have people from time to time coming to want to borrow money from the church. And I just tell them emphatically, we don't lend money. The church doesn't lend money. And then they get a lot, rather upset. Because they think, well, we can just lend money. We're a, an institution that can lend money. I said, no, you go to the bank for that. Don't borrow money from the bank. We don't lend money because we don't want to make enemies. And if you lend to one, you've got to throw it open to everybody. You've set a precedence. And so we do not lend money. But we'd rather help those who are in need, who need food, who need their lights connected, and when it comes to other desperate needs in the body of Christ. We'd rather just give money than lend money. I found that in my own experience. I'd rather give money than lend money. You lend money, and they can't pay it back, then you've got an enemy. So, wife and I have got a policy. We don't lend money. If you lend it, that person is under, under a whiplash and beholden to you because they've got to pay it back to you. So rather just have a policy, I don't lend but if God moves on you to give, well, give it away. But don't lend it because the Bible tells you distinctly that you make an enemy when you do that. God is your source. And then it's important that you sow a seed. If you don't put anything in, you get nothing out. God can't put anything in a hand like that. It's got to be open. You've got to give to receive. God gave to receive. He so loved that he gave. And so we sow a seed. And we give God something to work on. By faith, we step out and we sow a seed. Sow some love, you get a lot of love back. 
Sow some kindness, you get a lot of kindness back. Sow appreciation, you get a lot of appreciation back because you always reap much more than you sow. And sow a seed of finance and you'll get finances back. But you sow in faith. Peter gave his boat and he got a boat sinking load of fishes in return. The servants gave water and it turned into wine. The widow gave a little bit of flour and she had all her needs supplied as long as that meal barrel had flour in it. The boy gave his little lunch and fed 5,000 people. And finally, find somebody to agree with you. Somebody who will agree in faith with you. Not a doubter, not an unbeliever, but somebody of faith who will stand in agreement with you because if any two of you agree touching anything, it shall be done by our Heavenly Father. And remember, always keep a carefree spirit. Hallelujah. Don't let it get on the inside of you and you worry, worry, worry. How am I going to meet the need? How am I going to do it? You put it into the hand of God, now quit worrying. Because as long as you are worrying, you are trying to do it and you haven't put it in the hand of God. As long as you worry, God can't do it for you. And worry is a sin. You're not trusting God. And you're not exercising faith because as long as there's worry, that means there's no faith. As long as there's fear, there's no faith. So quit your worrying. Cast all your cares, he says, upon him. For he cares for you. We cast it upon him. And as we do that, from there on, there's expectation in our hearts. Oh, we expect. It may be today, it may be tomorrow, it may be next week. But there's expectation in it. I expect it to happen. Hallelujah. It might have a little delay. There may be a little delay. And of course, faith needs to work with patience. And patience will do a good work. And of course, God is just bringing us into greater trust. And it's all part of his way of bringing us into greater commitment of ourselves to him. But thank God you are expecting a miracle. I expect it. After I've done these things, I expect a miracle from the hand of God. Stand with me. Stand with me, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just lift our voices for a few moments and praise him. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for the reward of faith, Lord. There are those, and we heard the testimony this morning, my brother who's confessed what he read, that there be rebates and, and money in the mail. And Lord, we thank you that you're no man's debtor, that you do reward faith. And as he believes, so it, should, it is unto him and all of us. And Father, I pray this morning that we shall not be in doubt, but in faith. You'll help us to believe. You said everything is possible to those who believe. Now, Lord, we thank you today that miracles are set in motion. I want you to take somebody by the hand who you take as an agreeer this morning. Maybe it's your wife, maybe it's your husband, maybe it's a friend, whoever. Somebody you can agree with, just take them by the hand. And we're going to agree. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we agree together for this miracle. Lord, you know exactly what the miracles are that are needed in this place today and what we are looking to you for. There are those who are trusting you for financial breakthroughs. Some, oh God, it's a big breakthrough they need. Others a smaller breakthrough. Some need a miracle in their bodies this morning. Father, we thank you that you can perform and will perform that miracle today as we trust you. You said it's contingent on believing. And so we trust you. And we thank you, Lord, as we agree together with expectation in our hearts. Thank you for that miracle, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth.
in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, that miracle of healing right now, thank you for healing your body. Thank you for touching your body this morning. We thank you for a miracle in the body of Prem Singh, who is in intensive care in the hospital. We thank you, Lord, for miracles in our bodies. Thank you for the miracle in the bodies of others. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. We bless you for it, O oh God, and give you thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We've received it today, Lord, and we thank you for it. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Give him a great hand of praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now there is a miracle that is above every miracle among mankind, and that is the miracle of salvation. To have your sins forgiven you and to become a child of God. There's no miracle that's greater than that miracle.